Hello, logical thinkers. I'm Shades, and I'm debunking Dr. Lyle's fallacious logic. He is relentless. He keeps on twisting other people's arguments so that they will be easy for him to destroy. I wonder how many Christians spot his many strawman arguments since he lists that, lists that fallacy only after he has used it quite a few times. Check out his second example of the fallacy of irrelevant thesis. Another example would be why do, uh, why do living creatures have these complex parts that function so perfectly together? Because, well, if they didn't, they would have died off. Right? <laughs> now, it is true that yeah. they would have died off, but um, that doesn't explain why they have the complex parts. Yeah, and how complex it is. Yeah, I it, see what you're saying. That's awesome. I mean, if you think about it, natural selection ex explains why we don't have animals that don't are not adapted to their environment. It doesn't explain why we do have animals that are suited to their environment, you yeah. see. It's God that's required for that explanation. That's right. Because. That because drives me crazy. Dr. Lyle, refute this if you can. Premise 1. Living art organisms have complex parts. Premise 2. Complex parts function together almost perfectly. 3. Conclusion. Survival of organism is enhanced. But let's not stop here, but keep pushing the thought a bit. 4. Organisms' success in reproduction is enhanced. 5. As the next generation emerges, those well-functioning complex parts get to be more widely spread into the population. Let's put this into the language of logic for you to see the difference between a valid argument and the strawman argument Dr. Lyle uses. Let's say that premise A goes like this. Organisms have complex parts. Premise B is complex parts function together. Sentence C is a conclusion. Organisms survive. Let's make a deductive syllogism out of this. If organisms have complex parts and complex parts function together, then organisms survive. Premise 2. Organisms do have complex parts and the parts function together. Thus, conclusion, organisms survive. This is so-called modus ponens argument. It is valid. The conclusion necessarily follows if the premises are true, and they are. That can be verified with experimental science. Dr. Lyle accuses the evolutionary biologists of using an argument that goes like this. Organisms survive. Conclusion. Organisms do have complex parts, and the parts do function together. This is not necessarily true, because simple organisms may survive as well. The conclusion does not follow, because C is not in any way connected to A or B. This is the irrelevance Dr. Lyle wanted to show, but every single biologist knows this would be irrelevant, and Dr. Lyle should know that they know. Being a biologist, I have to address another other matter, too. Dr. Lyle's knowledge of evolutionary biology dates back to the year 1859, although he doesn't seem that old. Charles Darwin knew nothing about how new features develop into the species of organisms. He did receive a letter explaining the idea of a gene from Gregor Mendel, but his German was poor, and so he never included genetics as a part of his own theory. Over 150 years of study have revealed the importance of genetics to the evolution, and this has been demonstrated empirically. New features and new combinations of features emerge because of mutations, Mendelian recombination of genes, crossing over, and epigenetic processes such as methylation, acetylation, and micro RNA production. These processes that are at least mostly random give natural selection something to work on. Keep in mind here what I said earlier. Natural selection is a mindless process that sets up a trend during which some features get to be more abundant and some others get to be rarer and rarer. 
This happens through differentiated success in reproduction. Dr. Lyle's fallacy here is referring to outdated data. By the way, who are they? It's very typical of a conspiracy theory is to refer to conspirators as them, but leave out the names and references. Dr. Lyle accuses them of fallacious thinking of sort that I have only seen being used by creationists themselves. Now, they cannot speak for themselves, and we cannot check the references. If there is a study in evolutionary biology that is fallacious, you can single that out, and let's take that data out of the textbooks. A group called they never did any research in biology. Get the point? Do you? Bye-bye now.